stop. Take your hand out of there. Get your hand off that. Good afternoon. Today we have made it to Russellville. We're here in Illinois today cutting some beans. These are pretty good beans below the hill, but on top of the hills is a different, or it's the same hybrid, it's the same everything, it's just drowned it out a little worse. So the top of the hill there, I think the average for it's like 50, I think. I don't know, I got it wrote down somewhere. And then down here on the bottom is probably gonna be almost 80, 75 to 80, so. Yeah, we'll just have to see what ends up happening here. But the field over there, done like 65 or 70 on the non-irrigated. So it'll be interesting to see what the irrigated does right there whenever we get over there and cut that, probably later this evening or tomorrow. I'm not really sure when I'll get to that. I was cutting these first because they looked a little drier. That over there looks dry, but I, I don't know. Yeah, so anyways, we're just kind of looking around here trying to figure things out and trying to see how things go. But I got my feet up in the windshield, just sitting back relaxing like always. Uh, this is pretty a long field here, so hopefully I'll get a nice load for Ross and we'll be able to send that last truck out of here. But yep, hammer away like always. Woman's bringing me monocles again tonight, so going to be eating good out here in the field, hopefully. And, um, I kind of want to eat my peanut butter and jelly. I'm getting hungry. We had lunch. We didn't get started really today until about two o'clock. Um, it rained yesterday a little bit and it bumped the moisture up on the beans quite a bit. Uh, this morning whenever we started it was like 16 according to my monitor, 17 according to my monitor. So I think I'm a point off, I'm a point too high on my monitor, but I guess we'll have to do some more adjusting on it and figure it out. But yep, yeah. anyways, we're just getting away. My truck's sitting over there and I just drove my combine up the road with the head on it earlier. But I do not suggest and I do not condone it. And um, in case you're a state cop, I was not driving down any highways or interstates. So as you can see here, um, we're writing down our yields. This is a crop insurance booklet. There I all that. But we're going through and we're putting all this stuff on or we're putting all this writing all this stuff out so some of these fields like this one here i have to run another line up along the side of it same thing with some of these here which these two fields are split and so is this field and this one and this one is also split so they're all split a little bit different ways yeah anyways just kind of showing you what we're messing with and using i'm using my load numbers here and where i pull my loads from i'm dividing and whatever so adding dividing all that stuff so cross is waving but we got pretty decent load on that one 332 bushel that ain't bad that ain't bad i'm gonna keep her going for a little bit longer until we get up closer to the end so i can turn around and make my pass back Connor's in there with him so good morning uh today we're down here helping dad pick corn we got the grain cart figure for a little bit might as well I'll go ahead and change it up a little bit um uh, i cut beans a little bit yesterday i thought they got a little green on me i couldn't it's still a little wet hopefully the sunshine a little bit of wind we're supposed to have today will help blow it out blow it out of it but yeah hard to tell them so anyways i decided to come down here they was trucking corn out of here for it's about a mile and a half up to the road so yeah one cart won't really keep up with that let alone with the x9 so yeah me and xavier ran all last night zach's back this morning and we're gonna keep plucking away i guess so that thing is a corn eating machine though once it gets going if you can keep it going it'll eat some corn he done 200 some acres yesterday. Granted, it wasn't the best corn, but he still done 200 some acres. So that's pretty good. That's pretty impressive for a combine. But I don't know. I'm kind of biased on it, but 
run with it yesterday. Yeah, it it'll keep up. That's for sure. It's a lot to keep up with. Need some bigger carts. That's what we really need. We need like two 2500s or something like that. You'd be re you'd really be able to keep it away from it then. No will. We're cutting some really good beans down here right now. I mean, well, this part of the field's not as good as what it was over there, but we're looking at about an 87 yield here. So according to my maps, we'll see what the field totals did. So there's an Asgro 37, which we think this is actually a 38 XF3. And we think this is gonna average about 89 so far off of what I've cut. And then the 3490 Agrigold, which is what it was up against out here, done 88.85. So that's a bushel. Um, we'll just have to see what it does whenever I get farther back into there. It could go up some more. And as far as like we're just watching my yields and stuff here, this bean has a lot of potential. Um, we've seen places anywhere from where it's jumped from 85 to all the way up to like 110, 120. So we're cutting some really good beans down here. They're green, stemmed, and a lot of them are laid over as you can see there. I mean, I'm stripping all the beans off the stalk, but the stalk's still there. <laughs> So that's a good sign. I mean, we're getting somewhere at least, but we'll just have to see what ends up happening here by the time we get done with the field. These are about 10% average on moisture. And yeah, so we're just kind of hammering away. We're waiting on it to rain. We're gonna see if it ends up raining here or not. But I hope it doesn't. Although I hope it does because it's my girlfriend's birthday today and I haven't seen her in like two weeks hardly. So it'd be nice to get off around four or five o'clock and feel seer and yeah. It's really nice being able to see in front of me. So there's one of our neighbors, Brad Steelman. Steelman Farms, he's out of Patoka. And then one of our other neighbors, the Horrells, is over there. Their farm is just right over there. So all three of us are cutting beans down here. Uh, Dad ended up getting that one field done on corn, so I was done messing around with him for the day. And we're back to cutting beans like always. So. Do. What it do? Come on, go back up. Go back up. Go back up. Don't drag so hard. Go back up. Oh, bummer. But yeah, so far this field's done pretty well. This field has been corn on corn for the past, I don't know, I think somebody told me like 10 years, 10, 12 years. So I wasn't around to see it in beans last. I barely remember seeing it in beans last. I know that we had a problem with uh, potassium in this field years ago. And we're not seeing that problem this year anymore. We'd gotten a little bit, or according to my dad, he got a little bit more serious about doing um, fertilizer recommendations and going through and doing all that stuff, right? Or just kind of just letting it go. But anyways, we're gonna keep on chugging along here and see what ends up happening with the field. Um, from what I can tell, this field's doing really well. Be nice to see it uh, do a little better. I mean, top end's there. I mean, you might as well go ahead and hit it. Uh, these are Asgro beans. They came out and they rode around with me for a little bit. So, yeah. Anyways, we're just, yeah. I've been messing with my sayings again today. They was all messed up earlier. And this thing keeps beeping at me because I want to go fast and it's not letting me go fast. Well, mainly because these beans are being laid down. But it'll be all right. So, yeah. I'm hoping that we end up missing this rain. There's a cell right down there, and that is towards like Albion and Mount Carmel area. And then there's one up there that we watched go through that went to Robinson and hit Robinson. So hopefully they just kind of stay away from us and these rivers kind of keep splitting them up. And we can go ahead and get this field done. If I'm right, we'll have this field done by about seven o'clock tonight. Slow cutting, they're a little tough yet because they laid over and I don't think the sunlight's been getting to the bottom but if you get the top ones that are dry I mean it's all dry I mean it's coming it's going in the elevator at 10 to 12 percent so at that rate I'll just go ahead and I'll keep cutting it I mean it sucks going this slow but sometimes you got to do it so anyways we're gonna run into the same bean over at Wally's which is where we're gonna go next and then after that we'll hit it at the VU farm in Fritchton and then there's even a little bit of them over at Emerson so we're gonna kind of be all over the board as far as where we're gonna cut them at and what we're gonna cut. 
So that'll be a good test to see how this bean does. This is a newer bean. Uh, they only got so many acres of it last year. We ended up planting like 100, 190 acres, I think is what we figured it up to be. Uh, so like I said, we got it here, we got it at Wally's, and then we got it at Frenchton, and then I think there's a little bit at Emerson, but it ain't much, it's on dry land, which is kind of droughty, so it might drag a little bit there, but it'll be interesting to see. So, so I've been waiting on Brad to text me back, Steelman, my neighbor over there. He um, is supposed to be telling me his radio thing because I asked him. I know he's got the Midlands. So we got them too. Yeah, I still haven't got mine mounted up there right like what I want it. But I'll get it figured out eventually. I just haven't messed with had time to mess with it yet. I've been running all over the place between helping dad, working on combines, and working on grain carts and trucks and everything else. So hopefully we'll get a rain day here today or tomorrow and I'll be able to actually do something with it. I don't know. I want to put it up here on this rail mount. I had seen somebody comment on my last video that I should put a um oh a carriage bolt through there. So I might try that. We'll see what I end up finding. I might take this rail off too and see if I can't figure out another way to do it. But just have to see what I can find. If I'm smart enough, I am sure I can figure it out. Take that rail home with me and then I'll take the radio mount and then yeah. But I do like my I got a display bracket, phone bracket right here in the corner. This is the same one that I had my sprayer. I just put it in here for harvest. <coughs> I like having that and just slide your phone right there because whenever John Deere built these combines they didn't think too much about that that little hole right there so I don't know but we've been plucking away so got to turn around again We've been very blessed down here with the neighbors that we do have. Um, a lot of our neighbors, we do try to figure out what kind of a chemical program we're going to run, or based off of what our neighbors are running. So obviously, you know, we don't want to have spray wars down here or anything where everybody's killing each other's crops because that ain't no fun. So that's why over here in Indiana, mainly we just run Extend Flex because everybody just everybody around here runs Extend Flex. Um, it's what we like. They got really good genetics for Extend Flex. Whereas the genetics for Enlist are just dragging a little bit. And I'd say from what I understand and from what I've heard, they will drag for just a little bit longer for another couple of years until they find out more about them and they start breeding more of them. But for the time being, we like the Extend Flex beans, but in Illinois, we also have to plant Enlist because, well, it's Illinois. They outlawed it because everybody was spraying each other's fields, which that's fine, that's understandable, I get it, so. You can see that storm moving through up there. It's kind of neat. No. Ah. Sit back and relax. I hate cutting means it's slow. I just hate it. Oh, oh, oh. oh well. Ross is setting up a GoPro on his back of back of his tractor. So, I got Connor and Thomas driving trucks for me today. They're running back to the elevator in town. They're hauling all these beans there. And then whenever we go to Wally's, all them beans will go to Wally's bins there. So I'll just need one truck driver. So I'll probably end up taking one of my cousins, Steven, with me. He will run the auger. Steven or Nathan will go, and they run. They can run the auger and drive truck at the same time. As long as I have Ross there bring me a card, I'm fine. So, yep. But... We're gonna unload here again. We're at about halfway full. Ain't no need to get full with all this rain around. Where are you at, Rossi? Where are you going up front? So we did try another variety back towards home. It was a Pioneer, like a 3.8 in the list. We tried that right there by the farm and it done pretty fairly well it was more of a fuller season bean being a 3.8 and it held its top end pretty well i mean it ended up doing like an 82 average across the field which is really well but for that farm the last four years that we've had 
beans on it or around it in that area they've all done pretty well they've done more like the upper 80s lower 90s range so yeah just have to kind of see what happens and see we're bouncing up there and of course once I show you the camera it goes down but it, yeah it's bouncing up there to the 108 101 102 so these are pretty good beans out here still staying steady around the 10% or 11% moisture yeah I mean that that yield is all over the place it's crazy and we're full again well we're over here at Wally's now uh, we got the 9R there on the grain cart. Dumping. That's Connor's first time around a grain cart. He's a little slow, but he's okay. He's doing just fine. So we just got this one the other day. We've had this one ordered for like two years, I think. This one's a 7R. Our other one was time to be replaced. This is a 210. It's pretty similar to our old one for the most part. It's got the new cab. It's got the signature edition cab on it which the model year that we ordered this that was the only thing that you could get at the time was a signature edition because that was the first year for these new tractors so they're pretty nice cabs and like even that grain cart has, even that grain cart tractor has one but this is our auger been looking for a new one why won't that work oh yeah turn it on So yeah, you got the back saver thing on here. But, yep, we're over here at Wally's and we're gonna put some beans in the bin. And we're gonna, before we get started too far along, I wanna make sure that the beans are gonna go in the bin. So, yep, this is old two by two. He's got a lot of really cool tractors out here. He's got a couple of them around here. So here in a minute, we'll be able to see it move. See corn or beans fall from the top there. It'll be coming out of a spreader, so they'll be spinning around in here a little bit. So close that up for a minute. And wait until we get some beans flowing. I can already feel the savings of the back. It'll be fine for the first load. So I'm gonna try this again. You should be able to hit this button. Yeah. Should be able to hit this button and shut it on and off, but it ain't working. What was that? Stop. Take your hand out of there. Get your hand off. Minor mishap. Yep, it's spinning around. 